أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقالوا لولا أنزل عليه ملك ولو أنزلنا ملكا لقضي الأمر ثم لا ينظرون ولو جعلناه ملكا لجعلناه رجلا وللبسنا عليهم ما يلبسون ولقد استهزي برسل من قبلك فحاق بالذين سخروا منهم ما كانوا به يستهزئون صدق الله العظيم As I told you, a very important issue that is discussed in the beginning of Surah Al-Aam was that the kuffar of Quraysh at Mecca, especially their chiefs, they were demanding from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a visible sign, a visible miracle. Not that they wanted actually to see the miracle and then they would believe in him. But they were using it as an argument against him to impress upon the common people what we call the silent majority, to impress upon them that these people are sincere. They are asking for something which is logical. If someone is claiming to be a messenger of Allah, then it's not much for, for him to ask, you know, from him to ask that he should show a miracle. when all the messengers of Allah have been showing miracles. But the decision on the other side from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was that we are not going to show them any visible miracle. So it was a very difficult situation in which Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was placed. Maybe there some of the Muslims also were thinking, well, there is no harm if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows a miracle. Maybe some of them, you know, After all, maybe they come to believe, or even if they don't come to believe, at least they will have to shut up. Their argument will be finished. And maybe, please note, that such an idea might have come to the mind of Muhammad ﷺ himself also. That is why we will be reading some of the most hard admonitions to the Prophet ﷺ in this surah. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ مَلَكِ And they say, why has not an angel been sent to him, sent down on him? If we had seen an angel coming from above, bringing a book to Muhammad, we would have believed. لَوْ أُنزِلَ لَا مَلَكًا لَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ سُمَّ لَا يُنزَرُونَ Had we sent down an angel, then you know the matter would have been decided. And then no more concession, no more respite will be given to them. Because we know basic philosophy of life, this worldly life is that it is for the testing, a period of testing. If everything comes before your eyes, if you can see Allah, if you can see the heaven, if you can see the, the hell, Then you know the, the testing goes. It is that you have to believe in these things, to see these things with the intellect, with the heart. While you are in ghaib, Allah yuminuna bil ghaib. So that is the testing. If everything of the unseen comes before your eyes, then you know this, the question of testing goes away. So if an angel is sent, then no more respite. Then actually, on the day of judgment, the angels will come before our eyes. But then there will be no respite for anybody to do any good deed. And if we had sent an angel as a messenger, 
لجالناہم رجلن we would have made him also a man because we have made we have sent these messengers to for, for the humanity and to test them so even if we had decided to send down an angel as a messenger we would have turned him into a man wala labasna alayhim ma yalbisun and we would have covered upon them what is what they are, they are covering now yan because they have to believe the unseen that this wahi coming down of wahi is not visible jibril is coming to him no doubt but he is invisible you can't see him and if these things become visible then you know it's no question of testing now wa laqad ustaziya bi rusul min qablik now you know this is directed towards the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are not the first who is being mocked at all our messengers were being mocked at people were scoffing them wa laqad istuhdiya bi rusulin they were scoffed and mocked all the messengers min qablik who came before you fa haqa bil ladina sakhiru minhum ma kanu bi yastazeun but in the end what they were mocking at what were the, they were scoffing at those things came and surrounded them haqa yahiqo means to surround them this is the point that i raised you know when it was it came in the press that the wife of imran khan is to be named haiqa this haiqa you know it is from haqa yahiqo in quran it has appeared only for punishment and chastisement and you know azab haqa bil ladina kafaru sakhiru minhum ma kanu bihi astadu whatever they were laughing at whatever they were mocking at those things came to them and they were surrounded by them encompassed by them kul siru fil ard tell them o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam go round about in the land sum manzuru kaif kana aqibatul mukazzibin and then see if you did your eyes eyes what happened what was the result what was the end of the believers who rejected the faith what happened to the nation of ad the people of ad the people of hud what happened to samud the people of saleh alayhi wassalatu wassalam qul liman ma fi samawati wal ard and i told you the argument here and that is about the basic tenets of islam iman tawhid because now who are being addressed are the idolaters are the associators are the mushrikeen of bakka in the bakki surahs all the argument going on in 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 the madani surahs we have been reading that is with the people of the book they believe in allah at least they profess that we believe in one allah especially the jews they believe in par allah monotheism they claim but here you know the people at makka they were idolaters polytheists who believed in so many gods and goddesses who were praying to them who had carved out you know the idols qul liman ma fi samawati wal ard but even they believed that everything in this universe belongs to allah and everything in the universe has been created by allah at that level they were also monotheists only what they believed was that there are certain smaller gods also and goddesses also and this is actually the shirk everywhere in the world mahadev in india had been one devi devta innumerable god with capital g one omnipotent omniscient omnipresent these were the attributes in greece also in rome also one god but god and goddesses innumerable in this same way allah one wala in saltahum man khalaqa samawati wal ard la yaqulun allah if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth they will say immediately allah allah created they did not believe that there are two gods who have created this universe no creator is one and here the question you know qul liman ma fi samawati wal ard ask them 
to whom belong all the things which are in the heavens and in the earth. Qul lillah. And say yourself, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to Allah belongs everything. Kataba ala nafsi rahmah. He has prescribed upon himself, made imperative upon himself mercy. But what is the result of that mercy? What is the manifestation of that mercy? La yajmanna kum ila yawm al-qiyamati la rahma fi. This is the biggest manifestation of his mercy that he will definitely gather you on the day of resurrection. Why? People who are being wronged here, people who are being oppressed here, people who are exploited, people on whom others rule, they are ruled, well, they will be compensated on the day of the judgment. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody is living, you know, by moral laws, he is the loser. He might have to go hungry. If one decides, I won't earn anything from haram means, maybe he has to go hungry. If there is no resurrection, and they don't get any reward for it, it is injustice. It is cruelty to them. That is why it's out of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned to himself that he must resurrect you, he must gather you, he must reward you. Note the words. Kataba ala nafsi rahmah, la yajmanna kum ila yawm al-qiyamati la rayba fi. He will definitely gather you on the day of judgment, about which there is no doubt. Al-lazina khasiru al-fuzaw fa mula yubinun. But those who have decided to keep in loss, to destroy their own selves, then they are not going to believe. They are not going to accept it. Why? Because they know they are the evildoers. They are the exploiters. They are the oppressors. Now they don't want to accept that there will be resurrection because they will be punished. Those who are wronged, Resurrection is going to be a mercy for them. And for the evildoers, it is going to be a punishment for them. They won't accept. They won't believe that there is going to be a resurrection. In the preceding ayah it was, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ لِمَنْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ You know, space, time and space. Mafi Samavati Walar, it encompasses all the space, all existence, the heavens and the earth. Now the other dimension, time. And to him belongs whatever rests during the night and the day. So time and space, both the dimensions covered. Wahua Samiur Alim, and he is the all listener, all hearer. All knower. Qul la ghayr Allah ya taqidu waliyan fatri samawati wal ard. Ask them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you advise me to take as protector anyone else except Allah? Who is the creator of the heaven and the earth? When you also admit that he is the creator of the heaven and the earth, why not take him as your protector? Why not be friends to him? Why to befriend the smaller gods, even if they exist? What's the logic in it? Even if the smaller gods are there, why shouldn't I have a relationship with the, the chief god? And he feeds all the creatures. Well, Ayutram, and he is not fed by anyone. Proclaim, O Muhammad, I have been commanded to be the first of those who submit to his will. And should never be from among the idolaters or the associators, whosoever associate with him anything 
اور اینی ون ایز ایکول اور پارٹنر کولنی اخاف پروکلیم ٹو دیم ایون آئی فیئر دی پنشمنٹ آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی اف آئی ڈس اوبے مائی لارڈ دی ڈیوائن لا از امیوٹیبل اٹ ڈونٹ اٹ ڈزنٹ چینج فرام مین ٹو مین ایون مائی سیلف آل دو آئی ایم از میسنجر آئی ایم از چوزن ون آئی ایم از بلوڈ بٹ ایون اف آئی ڈس اوبے ہم آئی ول بی براٹ ٹو دی بک اولنی اخاف ان عصیت ربی اف آئی ڈس اوبے مائی لارڈ Even myself, I fear azab yawm in azab yawm in azim, the chastisement and the punishment of the grand day, of the big day, mighty day. Man yusraf anhu yawm aizin faqad rahibahu. From whosoever that punishment is averted on that day, it will be out of mercy from him. من يصرف عنه يوم ايزن فقد رحمه هو سيغر سيف فرم ذات تورمنت اكتوالي هي سيف باي ورچو آف دي مرسي آف اللہ سبحانه وتعالى there is a hadith you know the prophet said once nobody will be able to enter paradise by dint of his deeds only unless Allah سبحانه وتعالى has mercy upon him And some of the companions, he took the courage to ask him directly, even you, O Messenger of Allah, when the statement of the Messenger was categorical, nobody can enter paradise by dint of his deeds only, unless Allah has mercy on him. Even you, O Messenger of Allah, said, yes, even me. I need the mercy of Allah. So here it is. قُلِ لِيَا خَافُ وَيْنَا سَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمِ نَذِيمِ مَنْ يُسْرَفْ عَنُوا يَوْمَ يَدِينَ فَقَدْ رَحِمَا وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْضُ الْمُبِينَ And this is a clear and manifest time for success. وَيَمْ صَدْقَ اللَّهُ بِدُونِنُ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّهُ And if Allah touches you with something which is painful, unpleasant, then nobody can remove it from you except him. وَإِيَمْ سَسْقَ بِخَيْرٍ And if he touches you with something good, pleasant, something welcome, فَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٍ Then he is powerful over everything. Now this is all Tawheed. All attributes of Allah. صِفَاتُ اللَّهِ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ كَبَاهُوَ بِأَسْبَاهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ So these attributes of Allah. وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ And he is irresistibly omnipotent. قَاهِر Nobody can resist him. Nobody can challenge him. Irresistible, omnipotent. هُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ He has full control over his servants. وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ And he is All wise, all aware. Qul ayyo shayin akbar o shahada? Ask them. Who is highest in witnessing and testifying? Whose testimony is highest and most important and supreme? Qul illah. Tell them. Allah. Allah's testimony is the highest, the supreme. شَهِيدٌ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ And he is a witness between you and me. That I am his messenger. He testifies to it. وَغُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Very important ayah. And this Qur'an has been revealed to me. وَغُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِأُنزِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ بَلَغْ So that I should warn you with it. Behi is very important here. The emphasis is it. You have to warn through Quran. Give the glad tidings through Quran. Call the people towards Allah through Quran. Remind them of Allah through Quran. 
فذکر بالقرآن من یخاف وعید فَإِنَّمَا يَسَّرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكَ لِتُبَشِّرَ بِهِ الْمُتَّقِينَ وَتُنزِرَ بِهِ قَوْمًا لُدَّا If we are saying sermons spread over hours, but we are not quoting Qur'an, we are not narrating Qur'an, we are not reciting Qur'an, this is not the way that the Prophet used to preach or the Prophet used to call people. Through Qur'an. Tabshir with Qur'an. Great tidings with Qur'an. You read out the ayat of Quran and there are the glad tidings for the people who take to the right path. You read out and recite unto people the ayat of Quran and it contains all the warnings. You recite these ayat and it contains all the wisdom. And they are, each word of it is, is an ayah. It is a sign of Allah's knowledge, a sign of Allah's wisdom. So dawah. Real dawa in Islam is the only one, the vehicle of which and the instrument of which is Quran and Quran only. Not the stories, fables, in which there is, you know, so much thing, the exaggerations, without any authority, weak ahadis, unauthentic ahadis and riwayat saying sermons through them, actually, is deviating from the path of the Muhammad, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لِأُنزِرَكُمْ بِهِ This Qur'an has revealed to me that I should warn you with this. وَمَنْ بَلَغْ And whomsoever it reaches, whomsoever Qur'an reaches, actually, the message of the prophethood of Muhammad has reached him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is not preaching now himself. But this all preaching that any servant of Allah is doing is on his behalf. And to whomsoever this Quran has been conveyed, the message of the messengerhood of Muhammad has been conveyed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is as if by proxy. And it was, it was happening even in the days of the of Prophet sallallahu himself. When Abu Bakr he, you know, believed. Now he went out to preach and convey the message to others. Now you know, six of the ten of the topmost Sahaba, Ashara Mubashara, to them Islam was conveyed by Abu Bakr. And they embraced Islam at the dawa and at the persuasion of Abu Bakr. Usman to start with, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. Sayyid ibn Zayd, Talha, Zubair, the people, they were, belong, they were belonging to the most respectable houses of Quraysh. And because Abu Bakr was also one of the most respected persons, he held a position in the hierarchy of Quraysh. So he could convey the message to those people. Hullima. قُلْ أَيُّ شَيْنَ أَكْبَرُ شَهَادَةً قُلِ اللَّهُ شَهِدُ مَّنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَأُوْهِيَ إِلَى هَادُ الْقُرْآنِ لِأُنزِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ بَلَقْ أَيْنَّكُمْ لَتَشْهَدُونَ أَنَّ مَعَ اللَّهِ عَلَيَةَ الْأُخْرَى Do you really testify that there are other gods besides Allah? Now this you know, as I used the words before, a searching question with penetrating eyes. Do you really? Because from the depths of the heart, they didn't believe it. The manifestation was, it will come later. Whenever there was some calamity, whenever their lives were in danger, they always called Allah. Never called Laat or Uzza or Manat or Hobal. What did it mean? In the depths of their hearts, they actually believed that if anyone can remove this calamity from us, he say, only Allah. Not Laat, not Uzza, not Manat, not Hubal, nothing of this sort. So penetrating, seeing them into their eyes. Do you really believe? Do you really testify? That besides Allah there are other gods? Proclaim, O Muhammad, I can't testify. Even, you know, if you take the courage of saying, what your hearts are not saying, 
but you are saying i will not say it qul inma huwa ilahu wahid proclaim that he is the only one god wa innani bari'un mimma tushrikun and i declare and proclaim my disapproval of the association that you are making with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the shirk that you are making allazin atainahum alkitaba ya'rifunahu kama ya'rifun abnahu the people to whom we gave the book they recognized muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as they recognized their sons this testimony has appeared in the quran many a times even in surah al baqara beginning of the second part ya'rifunahu kama ya'rifun abnahu ya'rifuna annahu alhaqq min rabbihim they know it but they won't accept الذين اعطيناهم الكتاب يعرفونه كما يعرفون ابناءهم الذين خسروا انفسهم هم لا يؤمنون but those who have decided to destroy their own selves they have determined to go to hell well, they are not going to they are not going to believe in him ومن اظلم ممن اترى على الله كذبا او كذب بايات and who can be more wrong wrong doer evil doer transgressor than a person who forges a lie against allah subhanahu wa taala or he belies the signs of allah subhanahu wa taala his revelations now there are two things they are equally bad equally evil if someone is not the messenger of allah and he says i am the messenger of allah can there be something more outrageous than this on the other side if someone is the messenger of allah you are accepting him, not accepting him these are equal crimes wa man azlamu mimman iftara ala allah kadiban who attributes to allah a lie he has not chosen him as a messenger but he says i am the messenger and he is coming to me on the other hand aw kazzaba bi ayatihi when the real signs are coming and they are belying it so they are two equal crimes inna hu la yuflihu zalimun such transgressors and evil doers doers will not prosper wa yawma nahsharuhum jami'an thumma naqulu lil ladhina ashraku ay rasulakaakum al ladhina kuntum tazrumun and just recall just imagine when we shall gather them together all of them the day of judgment they will be standing before us summa naqul al we shall say to them lil ladina ashraku to those people who had associated partners or equals with allah aina shurakaukum al ladina kuntum tazumun where are the associate gods your associate gods where are they about whom you were asserting there are smaller gods goddesses we pray to them we bow to them we prostrate before them and you know their belief was how lie shufa'una in the law they will be intercessors for us with allah they will plead our case they will be advocates for us that means they believe in allah they believe that the final judgment and verdict will be given by allah only they are the intercessors how lie shufa'una in the law na'buduhum li yuqarribuna ila allah zulfa we worship them so that they can take us nearer and nearer and nearer to allah the same thing that we say about the awliya allah what is the difference we praise them we bow before their graves we are you know circle ambulating around, around their graves what for we don't think they are allah no they are intercessors with allah they are the beloved of allah allah will accept the recommendation from them and through them they are the wasila through them we can reach allah while we have read the ayah in surah al maida what is wasila zahidu fi sabil allah that's the wasila your deeds your actions
يوم نحشرهم جميعا ثم نقول للذين اشركوا اين شركاؤكم الذين كنتم تزعمون وير ار دوز يور اسوسييت جودز ثم لم تكن فتنتهم الا ان قالوا والله ربنا ما كنا مشركين Now there will be no contention with them except that they would say, "By God, by our Lord." Ilan kalu wallahi rabbena, by you, by Allah, our Lord. Ma kunna mushrikin. We were not the associators. We were not associating them. We did never think that they are equal to you or partner with you. Undur ka yafa kazabu ala anfusihim, wa walla anhum ma kalu yafteroon. Just imagine how they will be belying themselves in this world. They are doing this shirk. On the day of judgment, they will swear by Allah, we were not doing it. But Allah and whom? And gone will be the wind. All those whom they had associated, ma kanu yastarun, what they have concocted, they have forged. All things will go with the wind, vanish. Here they think that they will intercede, but there all will disappear. No lot, no uzza, no balat. We thought they will be interceding for us over here. We thought they will be advocates for us. Allah and Humma kanu yaftaru. It was all iftira. It was all forgery. It was all concoction. It was all your creation of your imagination. It had no real existence. So it will, it will just vanish. It will just go with the wind. Wa min hum man yaskum yuri naik, and there are among them who listen to you very attentively. Wa jalna ala qulubim akin na tanay fkhu, and we have put over their hearts coverings so that they cannot understand it. Wa fi aganim wakra. And we have put heaviness in their ears. Implied are the words so that they can't listen. Why? Why? When you are all the ayat in la you minu beha. And even if say all the signs and miracles that they are demanding, they are not going to believe. Hatta aiza jau ka yujadiluna ka yakulu nadi na kafaru in haga illa saatiru lamwalin. So much so that when they come to you. They argue with you, and they say these unbelievers. All these are the fables of the ancients, the stories of the ancients, which you are narrating to you, to 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 us, of Joseph and and Dawood and Suleiman and and you know Ad and Sabu. All these ancient stories, fables of the ancients, you are narrating to you. Now, what does it mean? I mean, whom my yastamir will like? Because I I told you. That you know, there was a hard time for these leaders of the Quraysh also, because they had to stop the masses, the common people, from accepting Islam. Now, how to do it? They wanted to pose before them that we are sincere people. We go to Muhammad and we listen to him attentively, but we find there is no essence in it. What he what he is saying? So they posed like this. They acted like it. It was a drama. I mean, whom are you going to believe? But they are determined in their heart that we are not going to accept. And this determination, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is interpreting. We have put covers on their hearts, and we have put heaviness in their ears. They can't listen. They can't hear, and they can't understand. Because they only pose. They only show off to their common people. Then we are not arrogant. We are not unreasonable. Well, we are very much reasonable, sincere. We want to hear. We go to him. We listen to him. But we find there's nothing in, in what he's saying. It is all, you know, the stories of the ancients. He had he had learned from somewhere, and you know, he wants to impress upon us that he is the messenger of Allah. But we know, my yes, come here, we like. وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً يَفْقَهُونَ وَفِي أَذَانِهِمْ وَقْرَةً مَنْ يَرَوْنَ كُلَّ آيَةٍ لَا يُمْنِ بُهَا Now this is again directed to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم as well as the Muslims who had thought sometimes maybe that if their demand is met, if some clear visible miracle is shown to them, what's the harm? 
مے بی سم آف دیم ایٹ لیسٹ دے ایکسیپٹ اسلام اور اف ایٹ لیسٹ دے ڈونٹ ایکسیپٹ اسلام دے ول ہیو ٹو شٹ اپ دین دے ول ہیو ٹو بی پوائٹ دے وونٹ بی ایبل ٹو آرگو اگینسٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اگینسٹ اسلام تو وی وانٹ امریکل ہی کلیمس ٹو بی اے بسیجر اف اللہ اس ایبسولیوٹلی نیچرل لوجیکل وی ڈیمانڈ امریکل فرام ہیم اینڈ ہیز ناٹ شوئنگ اٹ سو اللہ سیز وہیں یرو کل آیت اللہ یو منو بیا او مسلمز او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ٹیک اٹ فر گرانٹیڈ ایون اف آل دیئر ڈیمانڈز آر میٹ اینڈ آل دی میریکلز دے وانٹ ٹو سی آر شون ٹو دیم دے آر ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو بیلی حتا ادا جاؤ کئی جادلون کا یقول الذین کفر ان حضا اللہ ساتھ الولین وہم ینہون عنہو ینہون عن نہا تو سٹاپ ادر تو فرمیڈ ادر ینہون عن المنکر نہا وہم ینہون عن they want to dissuade people from accepting the faith of Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم they are forbidding them وَيَنْ عَوْنَ عَنْهُ And themselves are also holding back. So this is the double role. They also hold them back. They don't want to come forward and accept Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم as messenger of Allah. And they want to stop their people also, their nation also, their men also. If they accept all of them, where will be their chieftainship? Their position will go. Where will their authority rest now? Just, you know, as the leaders. of the parties. They make it sure that our followers don't listen to anybody else. If they listen to other people, well maybe they are convinced. If they leave us, what about our leadership? What about, what about the position that we are occupying today? We are the leaders. So they will take all pains to stop people. Don't, don't read such and such books. Don't listen to them. Don't go to their meetings. Why? Because they don't want that any harm should come to their positions. وَهُمْ يَنْحَوْنَ عَنْهُ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنْهُ وَيَنْ يُحْلِكُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَمْ وَمَا يَشْرُونَ But they are not destroying but themselves. This is the Akhra. In this world maybe they are very successful. And they have put Muhammad in a very difficult position, صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم. This was, the, this was the condition at that time. Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم put in a very difficult position. People are saying, because there is an incident which happened, one of the cousins of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم, and he was up till that time, you know, he was with the Prophet, although he did not formally accept Islam, but he supported him like Abu Talib. But when, you know, the Quraysh chieftains, they assembled and they decided we must ask this, you know, from Muhammad. Demand from him, show us a miracle. There was a meeting. They called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They put the demands. We will find those demands in Surah Tumani Israel. لَنْدُوا مِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى تَفْجُرَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ يَنْبُوعَ او تکون لکا جنت من نخیل وعنب فتفجر لنہارا خلالہ تفجیرہ او تسکت السماء کما زامتا لینا کسفا او تاکیا باللہ والملائکت قبیلہ او یکون لکا بیت من زخوف او ترقا فی السماء اس ہی رضا دیمانڈ you show us this, you show us this if you can show us, we shall accept you we are ready to accept but when Muhammad said, well I can't accede to your demand. It's up to Allah. If He wants, He can show the miracle. It's not in my power that I can show you this miracle. So when the Prophet was coming back from that meeting, that cousin of his said, Look, Muhammad, till today I was with you. I was supporting you. But now your nation, they have put on you the burden of argument. So this, this incident I have narrated, Imam Razi has narrated the whole incident in his tafsir. Muhammad sallallahu became very sad. And that is, you know, but what I was denoting, he was between the two stones of a grinder. On the one hand, a demand, and even the common people, they also think that this demand is absolutely valid. 
on the other hand, Allah's decision, no miracle will be shown. The hardship was for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَوْ تَرَائِذُ وَقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ And only if you could see when they will be made to stand in front of the fire on the day of judgment. قَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا Then they will say, Oh, would that نُرَدَّا That we are returned back to the earth, to the world. وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِعَيَاتِ رَبِّنَا Then we shall not belie the signs of our Lord. Because now they will have, they will see the, with their own eyes the fire of hell. وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we shall become, you know, believers. بَلْ بَدَا لَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُفُّونَ مِنْ قَبْلُ Actually, it will become apparent for them what they were hiding in their hearts. Now this is, you know, in their hearts they also knew that whatever Muhammad is saying is correct. I told you what is kufr, to hide something, to cover it with something, to suppress the truth. Something within you says, oh, whatever he is saying, it is correct. And it happens to most of us. When there is an argument between me and you, and at the, at the height of the argument, you know, I feel, well, what is he saying is correct. But how can I admit? It means I have lost, he has gained, he is victorious. He will dominate me. And then you say, I said, no, no. My heart is saying yes. My tongue would be saying no. So actually whatever Muhammad sallallahu was preaching, their hearts, their souls, they were saying yes to it. But they were hiding it, suppressing it. No. What will it mean? He will be above us then. We will have to follow him then. What about our positions? What about, you know, our... All interests, Western interests, they will all go. But بَدَا لَهُ مَا كَانُوا يُخْفُونَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَا رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَانُهُ عَنْ And if they are returned back to the, the world, they will do the same which they were doing. بَيْنَهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ And they will be telling a lie. وَقَالُوا إِنْ هِلَا إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا وَمَا نَحْنُ مِنْ مَبْعُوسِينَ And they say, there is no life except... This life of ours of this world, and we are not going to be resurrected. So there were also all types of people. People believing in resurrection, but with resurrection that there will be intercessors, these gods, they will help us, and they will save us from the punishment of Allah. But there were people also who didn't accept this idea of resurrection. They said, no, no, impossible. When our bodies will decay, our bones will decay. How is it possible? Our abad al Do you say that our forefathers will also be resurrected? This is not going to happen. And only if you could see when they will be made to stand before their Lord. Allah will ask, is it not the truth? You were denying, no resurrection. Is the resurrection not come to true? They will have to reply, why not? Indeed. By you, O oh, our Lord, Warabbina, by you, we swear by you that this has come to be true. Then Allah will say, now taste the chastisement and punishment with, with, with what you were belying, with what you were denying. قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ قَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ Definitely those have put them in, in loss, put themselves in loss, who are denying the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not going to meet Him. So that when that appointed hour comes to them, now this sa, two sa's, just as I told you, two ajals. 
ajal personal ajal that and the whole world that is qiyama the hour for me and you the death it is also an appointed hour and the prophet has been reported to have said man mata faqat qamat qiyamatuhu who dies his qiyamah has happened and then the the hour the appointed hour that is of the doomsday hatta idha jaat hum saat baqtatan and it will come at once suddenly qalu ya hasratana ala ma farratna fiha they will say alas for us we be little it we neglected it wa hum yahmiluna awzarahum ala zuhurihim and they will be carrying their burdens on their backs burdens of sins ala sa ma yazrul listen beware it will be a very bad burden that they will be carrying on their backs wa man hayatu dunya illa laibu wa la you say this is only life ayr allah says mal hayatu dunya illa lahu wa laib this life of this world is nothing but a play and an amusement as compared to the life of hereafter that is eternal this is limited 30 years 40 50 60 70 80 maybe one in thousand reaching 100 That's all finished, and that life is real. This life is like the drama of three hours. Somebody is acting as a king, the other one as a servant. This is a drama. After three hours, the king ceases to be king, and the servant ceases to be servant. They put off the robes. Both are the actors. Nothing else. In the same way, in this world. somebody high somebody low some rich some poor but you know death the leveler when death will come all will be buried in the clay the bodies will decay and become a part and parcel of the clay where from they had come originally fa mal hayatu dunya illa laib wa la wa la dar al akhirah khairu lil ladina yattaquna fa la taakhilun and the house of the hereafter is much better for those who have taqwa so don't you understand don't you use your intellect fala taqilun qad na'lamu innahu la yahzunu kal ladhi yaqulun now these are three ayat very hard admonishment to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam very hard Just imagine, keep in your mind, you know, the difficult position in which the Prophet was, between the two stones of a crusher. Qad na alamu, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We very well know. In nahu la yahzuru kal nazi yakulun that you are being hurt and grieved at what they are saying. Don't think we are unaware of it. We know that you are in a very difficult position. We appreciate it. Qad na alamu an naka an innu la yahzuru kal ladi yakulun. And there's another ayah in Surah Al-Hijr. Wala qad na alamu an nahu yazi kusadru kab ma yakulun. Your just shrinks all what they are saying due to grief and sorrow. Qad na alamu an nahu la yahzuru kal ladi yakulun. We very well know that you are grieved and hurt by what they are saying. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ But think, look, they are not saying you to be a liar. None of them says you are you are telling a lie. Nobody has ever charged you that you are a liar. وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ These evil doers are denying the signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They say you are not the prophet of Allah. they are repudiating the wahi that is coming to them this wahi doesn't belong to you this belongs to us we have sent down so they are offending us 
Personally, they are not against you. Just imagine. What an intelligent point. إِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكُ وَلَكِنَّ ظَالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْهَدُونَ وَلَقَدْ قُزِّبَتْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ قَبْلِكُ And this is not happening to you for the first time in history. Before you also, the messengers were belied. فَسَبَرُوا They endured patiently. عَلَى مَا قُزِّبُوا وَأُوزُوا On what they were belied, repudiated, and tortured and persecuted. حَتَّى أَتَاهُمْ نَصْرُونَا Till the time that the, our help came to them. وَلَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ there can be no changing of the laws of Allah. These are the laws. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكَ مِنْ نَبَيْ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And to you, the news of the earlier messengers have already come. I told you, this surah is, has, was revealed in the last year of the stay of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Makkah. So nearly two-thirds of the Quran had already been revealed before this. In which all these stories, you know, are what happened to Moses, what happened to Jesus, what happened to Lu, what happened to Luth and, and who, then Swaleh, it has come to you. To whosoever, to whomsoever we sent a messenger, they rejected him. This is the ayah. I actually tremble at translating it. وَإِنْكَانَ كَبُرَ عَلَيْكَ إِرَازُهُمْ And if their aversion and their turning their faces away from you, it, if it is becoming very hard, unbearably hard on you, فَإِنِ اسْتَقَاتَ Then if you have power, أَن تَبْتَغِيَ غَفَقًا فِي الْأَرْضِ To have a tunnel in the earth, أَوْ سُلَّمًا فِي السَّمَاءِ or ladder into the sky, Fatatiya Umbayaya, to bring some ayah for them if you want. We are not going to send. If you can't bear it, if this has come become unbearable for you, then if you have power, that you dig a tunnel in the earth. Or you have a ladder in the sky. Or Sulaman fil sama Then you bring some ayah from anywhere you like. And had Allah wanted so, He could have gathered all them on guidance in no time. He is all-powerful. As the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hearts of all human beings are within the two fingers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He can turn them, turn them which way He likes. He could turn all the people, first, last moments, in one moment. فَلَا تَكُولَنَّ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ So be advised, don't be from among the ignorant ones. And these are the words said to the Prophet ﷺ. Rabb is Rabb, Lord is Lord, although he might have descended to the lowest heaven. And the servant remains a servant, although he ascended to the seventh heaven. Even there he was up. The difference between the Creator and the Created, the Lord and the Servant remains. We saw how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address, He will address Hazrat Masih on the Day of Judgment. And the way Allah is addressing Allah. وَإِنْ كَانَ كَبُرُ عَلَيْكَ عِرَادُهُمْ فَإِنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ تَبْتَغِيَ دَفَقًا فِي اللَّوْضِ أَوْ سُلَّمًا فِي السَّمَاءِ فَتَاتِيَهُمْ بِآيَةً وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَمَعُهُمْ عَلَى الْهُدَى فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ 
surely those who listen they will respond they will accept wal mauta but they are dead abu jahad is dead spiritually dead his spirit has ceased to exist you can't make him here wal mauta jab asuhum allah thumma ilayhi turjaun allah will resurrect them he is dead and then you know they will be returned to him the qalu laula nuzila alayhi ayatun mir rabbi now repeating the demand and they say why on him the signs of allah the miracles have not been sent qul inna allah qadirun ala ayna yunzila ayatan tell them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful he can send any sign any miracle that you demand walakin aksaruhum la ya'lamun but the most of them don't know what will be the consequences if we show such a miracle then there will be no respite for them just as we found when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said well okay ya isa inni munazzilu ha alaykum you have asked for a table to descend from the heaven i will make a descent but now if after that any one you know he commits kufr wazibuhu then i will punish him give him the punishment la wazibu ahadum min alalamin which i will not give to anybody in the earth so that is the consequence if you if the miracle is shown then you know their time is off then up no more respite وما من دابة في الأرض ولا طائر يطير بجناحه إلا أمم أمثالكم. And there is no animal on the earth and no birds which fly with their two wings إلا أمم أمثالكم. They are also communities like you. We know today the community of the ants, you know, and the bee, you know, and everything. All these, these, you know. birds have also community they move and block from north to south these are communities organized communities ma farratna fil kitab min shay we have not omitted anything from the book summa ila rabbihim yusharun and then they will all be gathered towards their lord wal ladina kazabu bi ayatina summun wa bukmun fi zulumat as for those who belie our signs our revelations they are the deaf and the dumb and they are plunged into darknesses of different shades and different depths may yasha illahu yudlilhu whom sever allah pleases he declared him as gone astray wa may yasha yaj'alhu ala asrati mustaqim and whom sever he pleases he puts him on the right path on the straight path qul araitakum min ataakum azabullah aw atatkum as-saat wa ghayr allah tad'una in kuntum صادقين بل اياه تدعون فيكشف ما تدعون اليه ان شاء وتنسون ما تشركون say to them have you ever seen if the punishment of allah comes or the fixed hour appointed hour comes will you be calling upon any god except allah i told you this was the custom with them بل اياه تدعون when there is some difficult time you call him bal yahu tad'un fa yakshif ma tad'un ilayh and then you know <clears throat> he saves you from whatever has it had come to you and for what you are you are calling him insha if he so pleases but tan sauna ma tushrikun but one thing is sure that at such a time you just forget those whom you associate with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you don't call the lat or the uzza or the manat or the hubul then you call only what does it mean that you call only allah what does it mean in the hearts of your heart you believe in allah only this is only what you are saying you know with your mouth that these are also gods and goddesses barakallahu li wa lakum fi alquran alazim wa nafani wa iyyakum bil ayat wa zikril hakim allahu akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. 
The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, a Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, iman, in one's heart. Two, a Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three, a Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. Four, a Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.